Greenfield City um, Council, May 4th, 2021, emergency meeting, 5.30, WebEx conference system. And this meeting's being recorded and videotaped by the City Council and GCTV 15. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call of members? Yes, if you don't mind, um, Councillor Forgey, I see you are logged in as the host. Could you start the recording on WebEx, please? Thanks. Thank you, Kathy. Sorry Thank about you. that. No, that's fine. There you go. Thank you. Um, Councillor Jarvis, thank you very much. <clears throat> Councillor Jarvis, I do not okay. see that he is logged okay. in, so I will come back to him if that's acceptable. <clears throat> okay, yes, Coun please. Councillor Gwynn? Here. Councillor Disorder? Here. Councillor Bottomley? Here. Councillor Dolan? Here. Thank you. Vice President Gilmore? Here. Councillor Wheeler. I do not see that he's logged in. I will come back. Councillor Mayo. Okay. Here. Councillor Hirschfeld. Here. Councillor Elmer. Here. Councillor Forgy. Here. President Ricketts. Present. Councillor Stemple Ray. Present. Councillor Jarvis. I do not see that he has joined. And Councillor Wheeler. I also do not see that he has joined. Madam President, you have a quorum. Okay, thank you, Madam Clark. Okay, motions, orders, and resolutions. Okay, seeing none, I'm going to read. Okay, the City Council, upon recommendation of Mayor Wiedengardner, the Greenfield Board of Health, in accordance with MGL Chapter 252, Section 2A, B2, order that the City Council opts the City of Greenfield out of the State Reclamation and Mosquito Control Board. Majority vote required, seven. Second. Second disorder. May. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Um, Nancy or Jen, would one of you like to begin? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to begin. And- uh, Just introduce uh, I, yourself to everyone, yeah. Um, I, oh, okay. You want me to introduce myself to everyone? I'm the, I'm the sure, chair, yeah. I'm the chair of the Board of Health in Greenfield. And uh, prior to that, I, um, I was a physician in this community um, and I've done a number of other things. Uh, I'm also known as a gardener. <laughs> I'm very interested in this uh, issue besides the fact that uh, it came before the board. It was brought uh, before our board of health by uh, Nancy Hazard and Nancy's joined us today. Thank you for, for coming, Nancy. Um, and I want to especially thank all of you for the willingness to attend this uh, emergency meeting. We we wanted to get it on the uh, your agenda for the last meeting, but there wasn't enough time between when we dealt with it and you were going to have your council meeting. So thank you very much for the time that you're committing to this um, this evening. So um, I, you know, a brief summary is that uh, after having considered um, this uh, opt out possibility from uh, the uh, original mosquito uh, control reform bill that was signed into law, I believe, in the summer of uh, 2020. Um, we then part of uh, part of the uh, result of that was uh, to create a task force, and they were um, they were charged with um, setting up the possibility or the the ability for towns, communities, mun municipalities to opt out of this uh, required um, uh, legislation that said that, that the uh, various entities, the Massachusetts uh, Board of Health and various entities would 
decide when um, aerial spraying basically or, or treatment in general but it turns out that aerial spraying is the big uh, controversial issue that aerial spraying would be conducted um, should there be an outbreak of um, uh, worrisome and life-threatening um, uh, mosquito-borne illnesses um, and the one that seems to be the most, uh, that is the most active and that sort of generated all of this was the uh, triple E, the Eastern Equine uh, Encephalitis uh, Virus. Um, so we're, we're here today because um, when the Board of Health met and considered this issue, it was our decision based on the information that we had um, to opt out um, of the uh, required um, state reform bill um, and and we're able to do that uh, largely in part because um, a year ago um, we joined the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District um, and and our district handles all of the necessary um, requirements that the state would have which is which includes uh, surveillance of mosquito species and um, evaluation to see if any of them are carrying uh, worrisome diseases and um, and if there are such mosquitoes that um, how how do we then um, uh, deal with them and there are a variety of ways there's uh, larvicides which um, are used in, in several different kinds of settings. There's also uh, the possibility of using sprays via backpacks and also um, uh, trucks, vehicles. Um, but in any case, the, this was set up, um, this district was set up um, a, a few years ago and monitoring has been going on. We have uh, no cases of triple E in Greenfield. Um, and uh, so that's kind of where where we are right now. And as we move forward, we will continue the surveillance. Um, but we have the mechanism in place to deal with um, any outbreak that that should occur. So um, the feeling was in the Board of Health that we should opt out of um, of of the uh, mosquito control law. And um, I'm here today to um, entertain any questions that you might have to the extent that I can. I'm not an expert here, but I um, have spent a great deal of time getting my arms around the issue and speaking to people uh, who, who are um, more knowledgeable in uh, different aspects uh, of the issue. So um, I'm just going to open it up to questions and uh, see where we go. Okay, and this is for counselors to ask questions. Yes, correct. Um, and whoever. Um, Councillor Gwynn. Thank you very much, um, Nancy. I appreciate your time. My question base is pretty basic. And is this to avoid redundancy? And are we would we have the opportunity if aerial spraying was required for some outbreak? Is it still an option that we can bring back? It, it, that's a that's a good question. Um, there there is that possibility. Um, there apparently, I mean, if if it, you know, I think the question is, you know, what are the circumstances under which aerial spraying would be needed? Um, and again, I haven't been here long enough to kind of under you know to to understand the background of how um, decisions were made in the past. There what there has been some aerial spraying done, um, but it's, uh, it, it, there, for a variety of reasons, it's problematic. Um, but if we, as uh, the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District, decided that um, there, you know, and the state was saying, hey, there, there's this outbreak and it's in your district and this needs to be handled, then uh, my understanding is we can approach, um, I, I believe there's an aerial spray plane in Bristol Massachusetts that uh, would be available to us um, to Perfect. use. That's all I wanted to know, just to make okay. sure we weren't opting okay. out of something that in a crisis we wouldn't be able to ascertain again. So thank you. That's all I needed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Gwynn. Are there any other questions from counselors? Yes. Um, somebody said yes. Uh, um, Mayo. Councilor Mayo, go ahead. Um, is there any difference between uh, an aerial aerosol or or the way that it's been or the way that we're proposing by truck or or any other way? Is there 
is there a percentage difference uh, as to how how it's being done one way or the other? Uh, I'm percentage. Yeah, I mean, uh, is is one better than another, and and by how much, by how much percentage? Um, can't give you percentage. Yeah, Jan, go ahead. I'm not sure uh, about percentage. I just think it is how it's distributed, and it's just a wider range of how the spray is distributed as they're spraying across a larger region. Okay. Thank uh, you. And may I have a, a follow up, chair, Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead. Um, is it uh, more like uh, uh, now if if there was a, a, a triple E outbreak and we opted to stay with the or not go with an, an airplane, is there a, um, what method would be used? Um, uh, if we decide to stay w or opt out? Um, what what I can tell you is that the areas where uh, the Tripoli would be find, say, found, say, if there are uh, wetland areas, uh, uh, swamps, stagnant water, um, there are a couple of things that we have um, the opportunity to uh, use. One is a larvicide, which um, the larvicide are pellets that are put in catch basins and in areas where um, uh, suspicious mosquitoes have been identified, um, and that that uh, kills the uh, mosquito larva, so that there aren't any adults coming out of those places. Um, mm -hmm. I know from the experience in Deerfield that they have um, had very good luck using the larvicides, and they're very effective. And you just have to be very much on top of where the possible uh, mosquito infestations are. Uh, so that you can use the larvicide, but um, if if um, uh, greater action is called for than larvicide, and again, I don't um, apologize. I don't understand how the decision making is made exactly. But um, and Nancy, you or Jen or whoever is, has knowledge in this area, please pipe in. But um, the the spray would uh, I you know would you can target it in larger areas. It would not necessarily be on the water. But in the area around, and um, and those are targeted uh, spray sprayers the way you would have any backpack sprayer or truck sprayer, and I don't know more about it than that. Okay. Okay. Thank Very you. Good. Thank uh, you. Jen, Council. Council. I, um, yeah. I'm sorry, Penny. I'm uh, I'm stepping into your shoes. I saw uh, Jennifer off. Okay. Her hand. All right. And then after that, Councilor Stemple Ray will be as soon as. Jennifer finishes. Okay. Um, so Chris, that he monitors um, the amount of mosquito activity we have in Greenfield. Um, there's a couple of sites we already have set up. One is behind the transit center, for example. Um, and basically, we haven't had any significant mosquito um, activity in Greenfield. The last type of mosquito uh, that had Triple E was found in Buckland uh, last year or two years ago. Um, but nothing, um, nothing of great uh, concern currently. Um, and if spraying was going to occur, we need to keep this in mind, it's going to be uh, late August um, and went before the temperatures drop. Um, but right now, I think what we're also trying to uh, do is uh, do a whole education to people to start dumping out piles of water, tires, et cetera, where, where mosquitoes uh, can breed. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we do see this, people put like dunks or they actually put pellets in, depending on how many mosquitoes are around. Thank you so much. Um, Council Stemple Ray, did you have a question? Yeah, um, I, I'm very aware of uh, Carolyn Ness's work in this mosquito arena, I guess. And so I did read the. Um, uh, Nancy Hazard, I believe you provided us with that wonderful background. And I'm, I'm curious what it, because I was interested to see that Carolyn is not for opting out. Um, and so that surprised me knowing that we kind of have our own plan and we work so closely with Carolyn and we have for such a, a, an amount of time. So I'm curious um, if someone on the call could kind of explain the rationale 
it was explained really well in your synopsis, but I'm just curious, um, are we putting ourselves in an uphill battle by having to kind of like take the awareness and education route versus having the state kind of just take care of it? Okay. Um, the, we, we need to go with the education route anyway. I mean, that's a big part of what we're charged with doing um, as the Pine Ridge Valley Mosquito Control District. So that's an important, and may, in some ways, maybe the most important um, uh, function of, of what we do. Um, but uh, it, it's hard, you know, I, I talked to Carolyn um, several different times about this, and it's a little bit hard to understand um, how she sees this. Um, be, she was involved with setting up this thing in the first place, and um, she has the, the sense and uh, that if there were an outbreak, uh, that Deerfield would have the services of the state paid for if they didn't opt out. Um, and that it, they, and somehow she says that that gives more local control, um, which I, I don't quite understand. But what, I'll, what I will say is that following that call, I contacted Carolyn Higley, who's the uh, environmental policy coordinator for the EEA. And she said to me, uh, if you, unless you opt out, um, if the state decides to spray because of an outbreak in your area, you do not have uh, aerial spray. You do not have a say in that. They, they will do it. Um, and that, that was a thing that uh, really um, clued me into, well, that does not sound like local control to me. That sounds like um, state control. So I, that's as much as I can explain. I do not understand um, entirely her reasoning, but she, she feels comfortable. I think perhaps because she's worked with, with all of the people at the state level when they were setting this up and she recognizes that, that, that she's respected and they're respected and so they would have a choice at that point. But Carolyn Higley's words to me were, no, you would have no choice unless you've opted out. So that's, that's where I'm, that's where I am. And I okay, so it, any it, other. Sound, it sounds like if you opt out, then you can opt in. Whereas if you don't opt out, you have no choice whatsoever. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah. I'm seeing nodding of heads. And I guess my other well, question, I see that Jennifer's raising her hand. I guess my other question would be, we've, my dear friend for years has been planning pandemic through the FERCOG and now, holy moly, we're in a pandemic. So I guess my question is, um, is there a strategy with this group in terms of like, if there's an outbreak, we've opted out, these are our steps, or there's an outbreak, we we didn't opt out, these are our steps, like a reaction to a pandemic. I know that this is talking about prevention, but I'm, not a pandemic, but an outbreak, sorry. I'm like messing up my crises here. <laughs> no, we get that. Um, but um, is there is there like a, a strategy for like opting in, this is what we do, opting out, this is what we do? Because I want to be as proactive and reactive as we can, because it sounds like it's a little bit of both, mm -hmm. okay. if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Um, I think Jennifer. Jen, did you want to respond to that? So um, a couple of things. So first is yesterday I attended a meeting online um, with the state. It was Mr. Daniel Seeger, and he's the director of the Mosquito Control Task Force. And again, he was discussing the state's uh, input with the um, Environmental Energy Group and the Department of Public Health. So basically, they talk together, and I think because of this pandemic that has happened, the Department of Public Health is much more aware of responding quicker. So this is kind of a double answer, right? I'm kind of going to answer you, Ashley. So basically, I think that what's happening right now is prevention and education, and then we are working, there's plans happening now, what if this happens? So on a local level, we can plan, and, and there are plans that Chris has um, with the Pioneer Valley um, Mosquito Control District that we're a part of. Um, we could also have our own local response that uh, I, I would love to work with, uh, with uh, my chair. And um, 
and otherwise the Department of Public Health is ultimately going to give us guidance um, on what we're going to have to do as as a Commonwealth. So I hope I answered your question. Very helpful. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I can't see you all, but if you wanted to speak up, it's fine. Okay, seeing and hearing none. Madam Clerk, could we have a roll call vote? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Councillor Jarvis is not attending. Councillor Gwynn? Yes. Councillor Disorder? Yes. Councillor Bottomley? Yes. Councillor Dolan? Yes. President, uh, Vice President Gilmore. Yes. Councillor Wheeler has not joined. Councillor Mayo. Yes. Councillor Hirschfeld. Yes. Councillor Elmer. Yes. Councillor Forgy. Yes. Councillor Stemple Ray. Yes. yes. Does the president wish to vote? Yes and yes. The motion passes unanimously of those in attendance. Okay. Do you see a comment in the chat? Okay. Hold on one second. Um, is it, does Councilor Stemple have another question? Yes. Or? Yeah. Just okay, a comment. I just wanted to take okay, a moment ahead, briefly to, to thank everybody on this call for bringing this to our attention and doing the work behind the scenes. Um, you all continue like nancy hazard and i thank you so, like she's my confidant like i can ask her anything and so i just want to quickly thank you all for caring um and i think that's what makes greenfield so unique is that you all care so much and bring it to our attention because without you all we wouldn't have known really that this was going on with such great detail it's really important um coming from a family that's suffered a lot of cancer these things matter um, and how we go about things. Sometimes it's not the easy way, but it's the thoughtful way. And so I want to thank each of you from the bottom of my heart. Okay. Thank you. Um, I echo those sentiments and I want to thank all the counselors for coming to this meeting as well tonight. I appreciate you. Thank you. I, have, I had a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? second. Who made yeah. the motion to adjourn and who seconded? Second, Stemple. Gwen. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And for people in chairs, come right to the chairs meeting now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.